This is African News Tonight on The Voice of America. Hello, welcome to African News Tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Douglas Mpuga, and here's what's coming up. It has overstretched our work, it has overstretched our resources. Because for the moment, this is an operation that's not attracting a lot of donor attention. So we are providing the barest minimum of assistance that we can. That's Guy Avenon, head of the UNHCR in Kenya's Dabab refugee camp. On Somalia's drought and hunger problems, driving more people to flee the country. Also, there's cautious optimism at peace talks on the eastern DRC. And Senegal is playing Ecuador right now at the World Cup in Qatar. All this and more coming up on African News Tonight. While attention on fighting in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo has focused on the M23 militia, another rebel group, the Allied Democratic Forces, has been raiding villages and kidnapping people. The armed forces of the DRC, known as FRDC, have freed more than 40 hostages as part of what's called the Shuja Operation, a joint effort with Ugandan Defense Forces. VOS Kate Pound Dawson spoke with reporter Jaffa Alcatante in Goma for an update on the ADF fighting. FRDC uh, did some attacks in the south of Beni territory, uh, the region of Kabasha, where ADF kidnapped two weeks ago, many people in different villages during the attacks. And this weekend, FRDC succeeded to freeze some people. We are talking about 41 adults and many kids who were kidnapped by ADF and now are free under control of FRDC and Ugandan forces because it's the region of the Ushuja operation. Over the past several weeks, there's been a lot of attention on attacks by the M23 militia. But I understand that the ADF has also been active. Tell us a little bit about what kind of fighting there has been from the ADF. Yes, ADF is still uh, operating in the north of North Kivu province and in the south of Ituri. As uh, you know, North Kivu has now focused on M23, which are big, organized, and the attacks were coming in the direction of the capital city of the province. That's why many people were just talking about M23, but ADF still active. And during all last week, there were small attacks of ADF in Ituri and in some villages in North Kivu, killing people and kidnap some. As we know, last week, FRDC used helico- helicopters to track and bombing ADF camps, and then when playing, they freeze of stage. Now, even as the ADF has been fighting and the East African Community Force has been active, there are peace talks going on and there has been a ceasefire. How is the ceasefire going? Uh, yes, peace talks started yesterday. The Nairobi peace talks. They said peace talks started yesterday. And as we know, M23 was not invited. And when the head of state uh, did the agreement in Angola, say that, uh, they want M23 to cease fire and then to leave the zone under their control. M23 accepted to to recognize the ceasefire, but they didn't leave the zone they controlled. Here on ground, it's not true because fighting still ongoing. Uh, I don't have any information of all front line today, but yesterday and the day before yesterday, there was fighting between M23 and FRDC in some different regions. 
That was journalist Jafar Alkatante in Goma. He says the M23 fighting has moved away from Goma, the capital of North Kivu province, although many roads to the city remain blocked by fighting. The M23 militia claims to be fighting to protect the ethnic Tusi and other minority communities in the eastern DRC. The DRC government has accused Rwanda's government of aiding the M23, which Rwanda denies. The ADF is an Islamist militant group which the U.S. government and others say is linked to the Islamic State group. M23 and ADF are two of the largest of, mo- of the more than 100 rebel organizations fighting in the eastern Congo. Uh, as, as the third round of peace talks on eastern DRC uh, is underway in Nairobi, representatives from various groups remain cautiously optimistic that the regional talks will bring a breakthrough. From the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, Ruben Chama reports. Noela Moliwavio is a representative from a grassroots civil society group in Beni, in the DRC's North Kivu region. Tulipendelea tuone kabisa hiyo East Africa mipango ambayo wanapangilia kwa kwa Kongo ya kwetu waweze kuyaonesha vizuri bila kuwa na masito. She says we would urge to see an inclusive peace dialogue on Eastern DR Congo mediated by the East African community one which does not involve some countries that might take sides. I say this because there might be hypocrisy among some member states that support the enemy. Sababu kuna wengi nataja hypocrisy kunaweza kuwa hata inchi fulani ndani ya East Africa ambayo iko nyuma ya adui. Speaking to VOA late yesterday after the peace talks officially reopened, the Congolese peace activist gave more details about the situation on the ground. Kwetu hali sio vizuri sababu tunavamiwa na e, wavamizi au wanaochinja raia. She says the situation back home is bad because we are still being viciously attacked by the rebels. They are butchering people and thousands of residents have been forced to leave their homes. We are now living as refugees and we do not know when we will return to our farms. Na kwa leo sisi ni wakimbizi, wengi wanakimbia ovyo ovyo. Paka leo hatujua siku lini tutarudi kwenye mashamba zetu na nyumba za kwetu. Another participant, Kasereka Eric, represented one of the armed groups. E, kwa sasa tumesikia kwanza namna viongozi wamefungua. Lakini sisi hatuone maana ya kuacha siraha he says we've heard what the leaders have said but we are not convinced why we should lay down our arms the reason why we armed ourselves was because we were being attacked and killed mercilessly we've listened to what the leaders have said but we aren't ready to lay down arms because the problem which led us to arm ourselves still persists Angalia vile M23 kunakuja. Kwa sasa tumesikiliza kwanza lakini hatuko tayari kuacha siraha. Leaders from East African nations and representatives from the United Nations and the African Union joined the talks yesterday and expressed support for the peace process led by the East African community. Former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta is the facilitator of the dialogue. There are a number of armed groups that undertook to cease hostilities and which have kept their part of the bargain to date and I would like to commend these groups for vesting their faith on the process that we are undertaking having been to Goma and listened to stories of the suffering that people have gone through for so long I am more convinced that no effort should be spared in bringing peace and stability to the eastern side of the Democratic Republic of Congo the leaders from the seven nation regional bloc said the talks are aimed at stabilizing the eastern DRC where fighting between armed groups and military forces has escalated in recent weeks. President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda gave more details. The main problem are the illegal guns in Congo. These illegal guns have been there almost continuously since Congo's independence. And the illegal guns are in two categories. The illegal guns held by foreign armed groups 
groups from other countries ADF of Uganda, Interahamwe of Rwanda, Red Tawara of Burundi. The second category are the internal Congolese groups such as Kodeko, M23, Maimai. Paul Kagame is the president of Rwanda. Rwanda has repeatedly denied Congolese authorities' allegations that it backs the rebels known as M23. For almost three decades now, the problem of insecurity and instability in Eastern DRC has festered and remained unresolved. This situation has negatively impacted our region, including the hundreds of thousands of Congolese refugees who are unable to safely return to their homes, as well as impeding trade and investment with negative implications to the whole region. Kagame says the persistent crisis has been compounded by failure to implement past agreements, but he hopes the latest attempt will yield a lasting solution. A contingent of Kenyan soldiers is in eastern DRC as part of a regional military operation targeting rebels in the conflict stone region. The M23 militia has surged across DRC's North Kivu province, capturing swaths of territory and inflaming tensions in Central Africa. Leaders of the Seven Nation East African Community Bloc, in which Kenya is the regional heavyweight, agreed in April to establish a joint force to help restore security in the mineral rich African nation. Ruben Chama. VOA News, Nairobi. Record drought and hunger in Somalia are driving thousands to flee to neighboring Kenya for help. Relief groups say the influx of refugees at Kenya's Dadab camp is stretching the already overcrowded camp's resources. Juma Majanga reports from the refugee camp in Dadab, Kenya. <laughs> Raho Ali is just arriving from Somalia with four of her children at the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees UNHCR transit area in Kenya's northern border town of Dadaab. The 45-year-old mother of seven says the biting drought in Somalia prompted her to flee and seek relief in Kenya. Three of her children got lost following a gun attack on them while on the treacherous journey, and she has yet to locate them. On our way to the Dab refugee camp, she says with a frail voice, I met with the different things. People were dying of starvation and hunger. People were disappearing, she adds. I have even lost three of my children on the journey. I don't know where they are, Ali says with desperation. Ali is among tens of thousands flocking to Kenyan camps in a new wave of drought-driven refugees. The Kenyan government put a ban on registration of new refugees in the northern border with Somalia, but the UNHCR says it has profiled 80,000 new arrivals in the last few months. Relief agencies say the influx is training their capacity to help. Guy Avonio is the head of the UNSCR in Dadaab. It has overstretched our work, it has overstretched our resources, because for the moment this is an operation that's not attracting a lot of donor attention. So we are providing the barest minimum of assistance that we can. Kongani Athanas, health manager for the International Rescue Committee, agrees. So it's really putting strain on our facilities and on our resources because this population was not planned prior to, I mean, like six, seven months ago. But we've seen these cases increase recently, like the past three, four months. With a fifth straight failed rainy season, it is feared the drought crisis in the Horn of Africa will only worsen. And with parts of Somalia approaching famine, more refugees are expected in the camps. Humanitarian agencies say they are worried about the dwindling attention from the international community on the crisis and are appealing for more aid. Here again is Guy Avonio. We are gearing up for more arrivals 
meaning that we are making plans for more arrivals, but we appeal to the international community to really uh, pay attention to this side of the world because there doesn't seem to be much attention coming our way, probably uh, amid our other priorities internationally, including Ukraine. We are feeling it as compared to previous years and previous influxes and previous emergencies where at, we got more attention than now. For thousands fleeing drought and hunger across the border like Ali, their main goal is simply to get some food and shelter. Juma Majanga for VA News, Dadaab Refugee Camp, Kenya. You are listening to African News Tonight. I'm Douglas Mpuga in Washington. For more information on these and other stories from the continent, please see voaafrica.com. There you'll find all your favorite VOA radio and TV programs and a whole lot more. For world news, check out voanews.com. Residents in Uganda's Mobende and Kasanda districts, where a lockdown has been extended to curb the spread of Ebola, are pleading for the government to relax the restriction, especially on transport. Transporters say they can no longer afford to provide food and other basic necessities for their families since it was their only source of income. Other residents say they have no means to access their gardens for food. Catherine Nambi reports from Kampala. President Yoweri Museveni announced a three-week extension of the Ebola-triggered lockdown in Mobende and Kassanda districts that was first announced in October amidst rising cases of Ebola and deaths. The ban on movement affects both private and public transport. Seasonal markets were suspended, while worship places and social places like bars and gyms were closed. According to Museveni, some strides have been made in curtailing new infections, but noted it's too early to celebrate. He said the localized lockdown can only be lifted if there are no cases by 17th December. However, residents of the two districts are afraid they might die of hunger in the meantime. Angela Nakasi, a resident of Mobende, says she has failed to get food from her garden, which is about three kilometers from her home. She says before the lockdown, she was using a commercial motorcycle, commonly known as Boda Boda, to get the food, but now that they are not allowed to transport people, she has no means. Many of us are farmers. Our beans are rotting from the garden because we cannot move from our gardens, which are far from town. That the government should lift the lockdown so that people can go back to work. Ivan Chigundu is a taxi operator in Mobende. He questions the continued lockdowns despite a major reduction in cases. We have tried, we have tried all our level best systems in our people about the breakdown of Ebola. We have managed to fight for it. We so far have just one person who is with Ebola within a month. So I'm not contented. Hassan Bijira, a border border rider in Kassanda district, wants government to support them with basic needs. We need the food, uh, we need the medical care, we need all these social amenities to be catered for by the government. Phoebe Namulindwa is the Kassanda District Resident Commissioner. She says security organs will continue enforcing the lockdown until it's fully lifted. We have border border men that don't listen. And a number of motorcycles have been impounded and we told them that this time round we are not releasing any motorcycle until the 21-day lockdown. We shall not hesitate to arrest you even if you're a political leader, even if it is myself who is who is not following what? The guidelines that are given by the because directives are directives and the reason as to why they were given is to ensure that we stay where we are. The Ministry of Health says the lockdown is critical to help ensure that all contacts of Ebola cases are fully followed up. Dr. Chaba Inze Daniel is the Director of Public Health in the Ministry of Health. He says the success in scaling down Ebola spread is attributed to the mini lockdown. So the impact of having localized lockdown has given us yield and we think this is the best approach to manage uh, outbreaks when people do not follow all the regulations. In the last 15 days we have no new case and in the last 15 days we have had no loss of life. Since the outbreak was confirmed in September, Uganda has had 142 confirmed Ebola cases. 
with 56 deaths. 80 people have recovered. 3,636 contacts have completed 21 days of follow-up, while 4,473 contacts are still being followed up. This is Catherine Nam.